So we have a situation here in business, and this is around what are many people are calling the great resignation. So we have employees in masses leaving their current employer and, and, and going on to do other things. And so there's a multitude of reasons why this is happening. But really, this is the really the first time in, in our generation uh, that this is happening by the employee's cho choice and not the employer, right? The 2008, and all, that was a bit different, right? Those massive layoffs and the, the, that recession, that was not the employee's choice. In fact, now you could argue that this is the first time in the last 100 years since World War II that really we have a, a, a massive employee shortage and employers are struggling to retain and attract top talent. And so while many are focusing on the great resignation, I would like to turn our attention to something else and, and rather call it the great reimagination. And so that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Stick with me on the other side. So the great resignation, let's talk more about the great reimagination and how we can actually use this time period to bring on top talent, to reconstruct our business and to come out stronger uh, than we were. You can't really um, push or, or wait too much on the employees that uh, you are or are not attracting. In fact, you have to more so look at what it is that you are doing uh, so that you can uh, potentially bring on or maybe just change the way that you do business. Maybe you no longer need those people who are, who are leaving and maybe you can go about doing things in a more lean and efficient way. The last time we saw this was actually not too long ago. It was only about two, maybe three years ago where uh, COVID and the uh, pandemic forced our doors shut or forced us to change the way that we do business. And so a lot of organizations took that opportunity to look within and to try to change our processes and procedures, maybe automate a few different th things and try to change the way um, the internal processes and the internal organization ran. And so now we are uh, past that and uh, businesses are starting to come back to the office or maybe they are uh, introducing a hybrid way of work and so where the mistake lies is some of those organizations are trying to turn back the clocks and trying to pretend like the last two three years didn't happen and instead are trying to bring back 2019 when in fact you can't go back you have to push forward and a lot of employees are starting to see this and so you are now starting to see a couple different reasons why uh, according to Inc.com, that the great resignation is happening according to some of their studies. And so in November of 2021, there was a study of roughly 1,200 U.S. workers who had recently resigned or had plans to resign. And these were some of their answers as to why they were leaving. So the first was 86% of those employees um, preferred to work alone. Uh, and they wanted to be uh, remote workers. So they wanted to leave and they wanted to uh, be a remote work. They wanted to work from home. They felt they were more productive that way. Uh, and so that is the, the route that they wanted to take. What were some other reasons? 83% of them said that they no longer felt that they were growing in their position. So this is a uh, lack of leadership in a way that, that you are not uh, really connecting with your employees and are not showing them or selling them on the future growth of the organization. Again, maybe you guys are just, uh, maybe these organizations were trying to turn back the clock into 2019 and instead of looking forward into the next uh, wave and, and um, bringing a purpose into their business and through their employees. Next, 82%. Um, the pandemic made me reconsider my priorities and our professional goals. So to me, this is a, I was home with my family. I had time to do other things and realized that I didn't actually like this job and I wanted to be home more and I wanted to do things that were more important to me. Maybe, uh, maybe it was home with your family. Maybe it was being dinner every, on time every time. 
uh, every day. The, the no commute, right? I've talked about the different uh, percentages of time that we spend commuting. So we spend 78% of our lives either in traffic, at the office, or asleep. And so that rest of that 22%, that becomes our life. And what we do with that 22% is how can we, you know, how can we grow that? How can we make that 30%? How can we make it 50%? How can we tap, tap into that? Well, I mean, I don't know how many people are signing up to have less sleep. And then how can that, you know, how much really can we dive into that sleep? Because that affects our health. So I believe it was 33% of our lives were sleeping. So what can we do with the other 50 some percent? Where can we find that time? And that's where, uh, and that's the thought process that, that members are having as, and the pandemic created that. And now you have employees that say, hey, come on back, sit in traffic again. And we have people going, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't know uh, if this is really what I want to, be, want to be doing. The last one is 81% said, I have other passions or different career paths I want to pursue. And so that is a, that's simply maybe uh, they wanted to become an entrepreneur. Maybe they realized that they didn't like what they were doing. Maybe they, uh, there's a multitude of things. But so how can we stop this, right? How can we, uh, as an organization, take steps to combat the great resignation uh, and instead turn it into the great reimagination? And so that, that's what we're going to talk about today. Here are three steps of how you can do this. The first step is to refocus. So. Uh, it's time to ask ourselves as business owners, um, as leaders to say, is my business as efficient as it should or as it could be? Are we doing things um, that are running the business as uh, productive as possible? Which is a question you should be asking yourself if you're a business owner or a leader uh, annually anyways, but there is no greater time than now. Uh, around 43% of workers say that they're wasting time jumping between different digital tools at their workplace, uh, and it's hindering their productivity, um, and it's causing them to get less done, to spend uh, more time in a confused state. And so one of the big areas of this was around um, too many applications. Too many, too many logins, too many browsers, too many ways of doing something. And instead of creating a governance around the way that the business should be run or the way that we should be doing things, uh, it's left more to the interpretation of the employees, which hurts the business and hurts the business productivity. And so some of the examples of this is businesses have gone out and purchased niche platforms uh, that do one specific thing and don't integrate completely within your organization, like video calls. How many... Uh, companies out there have uh, Zoom, WebEx, um, G Suite, Slack, Microsoft Teams, and so on. You don't need to go out and purchase a application that does something that you already have in-house. Use the tools you have and that will uh, be more streamlined of your processes. Your employees will be um, know where it is to go for a meeting. They'll know how to run the application They'll spend less time jumping from application to application, and you can refocus on your business, do a complete audit, take a look at the software that you're using, the platforms that you're using, that you have. Not only can you cut costs here, but you're going to organize and refocus your team to be more productive. That is the first thing that we can do there. Think of it as cutting the cord with cable. I know a lot of you have cut the cord with cable, and so the reason for cutting the cord with cable was to be, uh, maybe you wanted to have better shows, you wanted to uh, reduce cost, um, and you just wanted to be less cluttered. Maybe your uh, 600 channel uh, cable was too much for you. Maybe you really only watch a couple different shows. But now, knowing those things, we want it to be better, cheaper, faster. Now, we find ourselves in a position where we have maybe YouTube TV. Maybe we have Netflix and Hulu and Disney Plus and ESPN Plus and, um, you know, whatever else is out there, the Peacock and uh, Paramount Plus, and you have all of these different applications now when really you're only watching a handful of shows. And maybe those shows are on all of these networks, so consolidate the amount of ways to watch that show so that you actually can get back to the core of why you did this in the first place to be better, cheaper, and 
faster. So that was the first one, to refocus your business, to do a quick audit as to what it is that you're paying for and doing, and refocus your business so that you can be, in fact, better. Maybe not cheaper, maybe not the right word, but more cost-effective and faster at what you're doing. The second one is to rethink. And so we need to think differently about how we approach our workloads. This uh, is the, the next step for, for your business, especially if a company is losing talent extremely quickly. And so uh, in a recent Deloitte study, uh, at least in a report cited that 60%, 62% of workers in financial services now use digital workers uh, like software robots, uh, AI bots, um, virtual assistants uh, to automate the more mundane tasks. And so while this isn't always the sexiest approach, I know that customer service is extremely important for a lot of people, but there are certain areas that you can automate and you can make quicker on your business that would uh, maybe not eliminate workers, fill in the gaps from where you lost people, and open up your members from now and turning from internal administrative tasks to external billable and client facing tasks. If you phrase it like that, instead of it being bots to replace people, but bots and automation to enhance the employee's um, way of doing business with an end client, because you should never lose the human touch. You should never lose the human to human interaction. While it is important to be, do things better, more cost-effective, and faster, you should not lose the touch of human-to-human uh, -human interaction because that is where real business uh, is done. But you can still use the automation portion of this, the um, AI, some bots, to do the mundane tasks. They should not do everything, okay? But updating data, data entry, classification. So rather than increasing the workloads of your employees, which burnout was one of the reasons why people were leaving, and maybe some of that burnout is due to administrative tasks and overhead. So instead of uh, them spending time working on the administrative tasks and the uh, mundane, maybe draining tasks of internally, maybe you turn their attention more towards the fun tasks and what they actually wanted to do when they first took the position, and that is servicing clients. So. That is how you rethink. And there's a few different ways you can do this within the Microsoft platform through Power Automate, uh, Power Virtual Agents, which is a new one, uh, Power Apps. Uh, and so when you're doing this, you're actually building these applications to be able to be accessed wherever your employees are. So you're no longer creating um, processes and procedures that can only be done in an office setting, but can actually be done in an office setting and a hybrid or a remote situation, uh, which gives your employees uh, more freedom to take back what their lives and to do things that they actually want to accomplish. Their processes are now quicker, they're more cost effective, uh, and all of your data is controlled in house. Right? These are all things that you need to reconsider and rethink about your processes and internal business, which leads us to the last portion of this, which is re-architect. And so re-architect can mean a lot of different things, but we need to reimagine the way that work gets done within our business and the way that we are deploying our technology and how we are deploying uh, our technology. Hatfield, uh, a member of Deloitte, uh, explained that the point of this is to use digital tools uh, to their full advantage and in that process empower workers in the process. So what that means is we need to make sure that your employees are empowered, that they're able to use their tools to their fullest capabilities and that what you're paying for is actually able to be used in a productive way instead of a confusing way. So in order to re-architect though, you, still, you first have to refocus, rethink. You can't just take things and wing it. You can't just implement a new technology and wing it. Even if that technology is currently existing and you're, ready, you're starting to set in a governance, you still need to make sure that you involve the most important and biggest hurdle and hardest thing when doing an implementation or a re-architecture, which is people. Your people and the human emotion is the biggest thing that you will need to overcome 
when doing any of these three steps. So please make sure during the re-architecture state, which could be simply, hey, this is the way we're doing things. And as, a, as businesses, you know, as they start to grapple with uh, labor shortages and processes and all these other different things that are caused by this great resignation, the ones that are going to, to win are the ones that are listening to its pe their people and the ones that are reimagining the way that their business can get things done. And so that involves bringing in your people and having conversations with them, real conversations, uh, through things like champions groups, through one-on-one -on -one conversations. And so this can only be done by talking to your members. And that is the biggest part around re-architecture, not necessarily buying a, a software off the shelf, uh, installing the, the latest CRM or those commercials that you see of, oh, you know, buy this project management tool because it'll make your life easier. No, it won't. If you don't have a process and a procedure around how to use that, you're just spending money monthly on a tool. So that's it, guys. That's how we are going to tackle the great resignation. Because who cares about the great resignation? You might have less people, but is that really your problem? Or is your problem the fact that your benefits aren't there, you're overworking your people, uh, you're not listening to your employees? You need to reimagine the way that you do business through refocusing, refocus what your priorities are and how you're managing them. You need to rethink your processes and the way that you're tracking your data and if you're overloading your employees. And then you need to re-architect your environment to say, this is the way we do things, this is the most efficient way, and here are the tool sets that we are going to to use going forward. Hope you guys got a lot out of this. I thank you so much for listening in and until next time guys, see you.